Every day, I walk alongside this stream, and I admire the ecosystem of plants that grow on its banks and in the shade under the trees. Asian jasmine is the most common plant, and ferns grow amongst the rocks of the embankment. Wildflowers grow on the stream's edges, and lilies cover the water in summer. I decided to make kusumono based on this environment. I found wild strawberries growing. I had to make these the centerpiece of my kusumono. I couldn't resist trying one to see how they taste. Not great. I needed river mud to make some muck soil. Some people make a big deal out of this, saying you need special soil from special places, but I've found any sort of silty clay type soil will work. I've used the mud from rice fields and garden clay. This sediment should work fine. First, I need to make the muck soil. I would normally use the fines from my bonsai mix, but I haven't been sifting my bonsai mix lately because I don't want to make a lot of dust in my apartment. So I grind some with a mortar and pestle. Next, I need to remove any pebbles from the stream mud. The one thing all these types of soil have in common is anaerobic decomposition, and to be honest, this stuff smells awful. I add the ground acadama and sphagnum moss to the mud from the stream, in roughly equal proportions. Next, I need to mix it. I wasn't excited about this, as you can see from the expression on my face. I'm breathing through my mouth because it smelt so bad. The result is a sticky, moldable muck mix that will work well. Actually, a lot of the smell went away after it was mixed too. I have a few rocks that I've found. Actually, I think one of these is a piece of broken tile or pipe. Individually, they aren't amazing, but lately I've been interested in the idea of stacking rocks for bonsai. Ever since I visited Oita, I've been thinking about more abstract forms of bonsai, and not just reproductions of nature. I found this arrangement for the rocks. Some epoxy putty makes it permanent. With all my plants and tools assembled, I'm ready to start making the kusumono. I begin by working out the arrangement of the plants. Actually, this turns out to be simple and logical. I feel the ferns should go in the lower, darker crevice, the wild strawberries should go on top, and the tall wildflowers should go in the rear.
These Coreopsis are much too large, so I need to divide them. I begin by filling the cracks with sphagnum moss to assist with moisture retention and also to hide the joins. Next I use the muck mix to create walls and hollows for the plants. I add the plants to the composition, using more muck mix to secure them. Where possible, I add some straight Akadama to allow oxygen to the roots. Finally, I add moss to any bare places. This is not just aesthetic. It is crucial to keeping the soil in place and preventing erosion while the roots get established. The composition is finished. However, the structure of the rocks has been lost a little bit. In the future, as the plants get established, I'll work to bring back the soil line and expose more of the rocks. I like Kusimono for their looseness and eccentricity. They're a snapshot of a place and a season, but even more than bonsai, they can be allowed to take on a life of their own. Some plants will grow and spread, others may not survive, and weeds, if they suit the composition, can be welcomed. I promise to show you this Kusimono again as it changes and grows, because I know people are always dubious about the fate of plants on rocks. But regardless of how it might change in the future, this will always be a memory for me of a moment, a summer afternoon, in the stream by my home.